So I was fighting for my own rights. Tell a pull up on me, healing. Like when a dingy, where your vest at? You was 4K, you was crown prince of the expats. Plus, we in Kigali, you can't roll around. Yeah, what's up, black people? Welcome to another unlawful arrest prevention video. If you're tuned in, then you already know that on this channel we analyze crowdsourced videos of traffic stops and arrests in order to educate citizens on the ways that law enforcement officers may break legal protocol. Watching videos of traffic stops and arrests helps us see the tactics and tricks that cops most often use to execute the unlawful arrests of black people. By understanding their strategies, we can develop our own, which allow us to punish them financially later on by bringing civil rights lawsuits and winning large payouts. Now, although never our intended audience, it's become apparent to me that a number of the people watching UAP videos and following this channel are either current or former police officers. Also, the cops who watch this channel and follow the UAP Instagram do so under Finstas or fake accounts. To all of the police watching, you don't need to hide. And if you really want to know, here is what our ultimate goal is. UAP's mission what we want is for the police to treat all black people the exact same way they treat wealthy, well-connected white people. Once that happens, there will be absolutely no use for this channel anymore. What would our objective look like in practice? It means cops would not arrest black people unless they were 100% absolutely certain that one of us had committed a crime. Also, cops would not pull us over unless of course we committed some egregious traffic violation. When cops do pull us over, they would quickly and respectfully issue a traffic citation and then allow us to be on our way. They wouldn't detain us as long as possible while they looked for other reasons to arrest us. When this is the reality, UAP, this channel, will have no reason to exist. But until that happens, this is the clearest path to change. To train black people on how to stay safe in the face of police misconduct, while also strategically positioning themselves to bring a successful civil rights lawsuit later on. Now today's video is one of the craziest unlawful arrests I've ever seen under the guise of a false DUI accusation. The cops literally kidnap and hold a man hostage in some sort of police parking structure while they berate him with false accusations and hope that he will ultimately give in, admit to some wrongdoing, and absolve the cops of their own wild and illegal behavior. Fortunately, the victim remained calm and was able to get free and file a lawsuit. But no one should ever have to experience something like this, and the city should have to pay for the behavior of cops who act this bizarre and wild cowboy in their interpretation of the law. And the city should have to pay when its police officers target black people so obviously and egregiously. Now before we can get into the video, we've gotta get through the disclaimers. So as always, one, I am not an attorney. Please contact an attorney if you have an urgent legal matter. If you need help finding an attorney in your area, please submit a claim through unlawfularrestprevention.org and we will do our best to help you find adequate representation. Two, unlawful arrest prevention and any videos associated with it are not for the criminally minded and are intended to help ensure legal recourse for citizens who become the victims of a civil rights violation. Three, never under any circumstances tell a police officer that you are going to sue him during the course of a traffic stop or arrest. Where are you at? Where are you at? What do you mean? Where are you at? I don't understand. Okay, you drove this, right? What, what, where are we going? I, I came to the ATM. Okay, look at, look down. What does that look like? What is, can you just get to the point, like, I don't... You're on the anything. sidewalk. I didn't realize, I, I came from this direction. Right, but the parking lot ends and the sidewalk begins. Now, just like cops will lie to you, they will also ask you weirdly phrased questions that are open to interpretation, like they did here. Then, they will use anything as small as a stutter, a look of confusion, or a brief pause as evidence that you are being evasive or are under the influence. Here, the cops ask the victim, do you know where you're at? If anyone came up to me and asked, do you know where you're at? I would not respond immediately. In fact, it would cause me to wonder, where am I for him to be asking me such a question? 
Am I somewhere dangerous? What does he mean? Where am I at? The point is, the question is open to interpretation, and you wouldn't know exactly what answer they wanted. The cop does this on purpose so that they could spin his natural reaction of confusion as evidence of intoxication or being evasive to their questioning. Have you been drinking tonight? No. Okay. Sounds in one cent ten if I could have a code one fill. Uh, do you have your driver's license? Code one fill lot because four, Charles twenty four. You're driving on the sidewalk? That's illegal. Okay. Are you gonna give me a ten forty now? Yes. Oh no, I've seen okay. ATMs there on the street. Have you been smoking pot no, or anything? No. You're not under the influence of anything? No. Nope. Can you do me a favor? No. Can you watch my finger just with your eyes I'm but don't move your head? head? No. No? no. Okay, then I can't let you drive away. On UAP, we believe in the importance of having pre-prepared responses to the leading questions that cops will ask when they are trying to falsify cause for an arrest. You should always rehearse prepared answers that you can repeat to the cops the same way you would prepare responses for something like a job interview. The reason is this. Whether you consider yourself extremely articulate and knowledgeable, or whether you think you have the best communication skills in the world, it does not matter. Cops illegally stop and question people under false pretenses multiple hundreds or thousands of times over the course of their careers. They have way more real-world practice when it comes to unlawfully arresting you than you could ever have practiced avoiding such a situation. The main prepared responses you should have committed to memory are, example one, cop says they smell weed and then asks to search your car. You say, you are mistaken, officer. I don't smoke weed and there are no guns or drugs in my car. I do not consent to a search of my vehicle. Am I detained or am I free to leave? Say a cop keeps asking you the same questions. Like in this situation, why did you park on the sidewalk? Have you been drinking? Have you been smoking? Why did you park on the sidewalk? Have you been drinking? And say the cops won't take no for an answer, then you simply repeat, I do not feel comfortable answering any more questions without a lawyer present. You can repeat that to whatever they ask you. Three, say the cop tries to make you take a field sobriety test. Now this is extremely important. As soon as the cop even suggests the idea of a field sobriety test, you say, I do not consent to a field sobriety test. However, I do consent to a breathalyzer. I am requesting a breathalyzer. All cops should have a breathalyzer in their car. If for some reason the cop claims he does not have one with him, you can say, in that case, I am requesting a supervisor and a breathalyzer, and I will wait for the supervisor to bring one if need be. As you will see in this video, the cop can just make up whether you passed or failed a field sobriety test at whim. Where are you headed to, Sam? No? Sir? Nothing? Do you speak English? Okay, sir, I'm really kind of thinking you're impaired. You couldn't answer questions. Where are you at? What do you mean? Where are you at? Have you been drinking tonight? No. Have you been smoking pot no, or anything? No. You're not under the influence of anything? No. Nope. You, you can't figure out that you're on the sidewalk. Um, so if, if you don't let me go ahead with tests, I'm going to have to base it on what I've got, which is what you've given me. With, with which like, is almost nothing, like, which is almost nothing, like, which is almost nothing. Your disorientation, your inability to differentiate between the street and the sidewalk. Are you recording? I am, yes. Can you, can you, can you for the record tell me what disorientation I'm exhibiting you, to you? You couldn't identify where you were at. Now something important just happened, and I have a feeling most people watching will probably miss it because the cop did it very quickly and sneakily. Notice that the cops say to the driver, or the victim in this case, that they have to arrest him if he doesn't do a field sobriety test. They didn't even mention a breathalyzer. That is because cops know that a breathalyzer may actually stop them from getting the DUI arrest they were fishing for in the first place. Whereas if they can get you or coerce you into agreeing to a field sobriety test, they can fail you no matter what. Now this goes back to my earlier point about having prepared responses that you can use no matter what the cops are asking. 
If you are ever in a situation like this, where a cop is berating you with questions, like about why you couldn't answer where you were at, or why you didn't notice you were parked on a sidewalk, do not ever even engage with him. No matter what you say, they will spin it and rewrite it in their police report as supportive of their claim that you were under the influence. Therefore, in a situation like this, you can simply repeat the phrase, I do not consent to a field sobriety test, but I will perform a breathalyzer test. Otherwise, I do not feel comfortable answering any more questions without a lawyer present. As you continue to watch, you will see how the cops more and more dishonestly attempt to spin the victim's behavior to support their claim that he is under the influence. As far as any of my questions, other than to say that the ATMs were here, you couldn't answer any of my questions. I'm not familiar with the area. Okay, but you can tell the difference between a sidewalk and a roadway, correct? Not when there's no, like, leveling difference. I could so, not. So you need, you need a curb in order to tell the difference between a street and a sidewalk? When it's really dark, that may be the case. Okay, but you understand why you, uh, I don't have this problem normally. Most people don't do this, so that's why you couldn't answer the questions, you couldn't differentiate uh, between the difference between the sidewalk and the roadway. Yeah. Um, you, you had trouble understanding what I was asking about. No, I didn't. So, and then you refused to, to provide me any, um, any investigative leads to try and figure out if you're impaired or not. Because I don't... I don't. I really don't care. So. Okay. I don't. I don't respond to condescending questions. Person behind you. Look at you. Thank you. Yes. Right. What brings you down here tonight? I don't answer these questions, sir. Okay. So you, if you like, any question. I'm not, I'm not answering, like, excessive questions or... Okay. If you could go ahead and put your hands behind your back for me. We're going to go ahead and take you into custody for driving under the influence. Now, at the moment the victim is handcuffed and taken into police custody, he already has a lawsuit for unlawful arrest. In this case, the DUI charge was dropped instantly when the victim's blood test came back negative for all drugs and alcohol. As was the correct thing to do, the victim still brought a lawsuit. However... As we keep watching, pay attention to how the cops continue to break several more laws, including conducting an illegal search of the driver's vehicle, despite the fact that the driver verbally expresses that he does not consent to a search. So far, the cops have already violated multiple laws, and it only gets worse from here. But even at this point, a lawsuit could claim racial profiling, illegal search and seizure, unlawful arrest, all in violation of 42 U.S.C. Section 1983 and other federal laws. However, keep watching because by the end of the video, the police officer loses all grasp on reality and starts acting completely insane. I do not consent. I do not consent. I absolutely do, did not allow you to open that door. You you unlocked my door. I did, yes. Come on, man. Me? Yeah, bro. What the? What is your issue? I could feel the money. I was trying to get it out. You pulling my fucking pants down, man? Okay. When you got stuff in your pockets on the inside, pull them right back up for you. Why you, you're getting in my, my car? I, I don't know. I wasn't here at first, okay? I just got here. All right, my man? How is that not illegal? We're gonna sit. Now, what the police do here is a textbook example of an illegal search of this victim's vehicle. The cops go into his car despite the fact that he did not consent to a search. Then the police find prescription medication in properly labeled bottles. They will still try to use the prescription medication as evidence of DUI several times throughout the rest of the video. By the end of this video, the cops have broken enough civil rights for any competent and experienced lawyer to be able to easily win a settlement in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. However, as a side note, if you are black and take prescription medication for anything, whether a physical or mental condition, and you sometimes have it in the car with you, you should always take two precautions. The first, like the driver in this video did, always keep your medications in their official bottle. The second, get your prescriber to write and sign an official letter listing the medications that they prescribe you and including their office's contact information. Then, keep this document in your glove compartment. You are not required to do this, but this extra step may help you maximize the settlement you win when you file a lawsuit later on. 
This is because by showing the cops an official document from a prescriber if they ask about your medications, they can no longer use those medications as probable cause for your arrest when questioned by a lawyer. In other words, if they illegally search your car and find prescription meds, and you are on body camera showing them a letter from your prescriber, then they won't be able to use those meds as an excuse for their illegal actions in court. Oh, just because you seem curious about what was going on here. Yeah, I'm just curious. Okay. What's right? Yeah, no, uh, it, it appears to me that he was driving under the influence, you know, driving up here onto the sidewalk and stuff. Yeah, yeah, so right. he had a bunch of drugs in his car, so that's what's going on. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Black people. If you ever see one of your own being arrested during a traffic stop and can also see that he or she is not resisting, you should film no matter what. Maintain a safe distance from the police, act respectfully, and do not interfere or say anything, but do not stop filming. Your brother or sister might need that footage in court if cops decide to turn off their body cameras. Also, it is not against the law to film, so long as you stay a certain distance away. Therefore, if the cops arrest you for filming, you should also bring a lawsuit. This, like, it, how, how, does, how is this not illegal? How I'm in handcuffs, I'm in jail, my truck's going to be towed for me being under the, like, you won't even tell me what the, what the influence you suspect is, are you? What were you suspected of? Yeah, like, drugs. Drugs? Like, like what? I can't, I, I can't tell you, I'm, I wasn't the primary officer, I'm just telling you what you're being arrested for. But well, my sergeant here can tell you. Well, we had to answer some yeah. questions. Yeah, absolutely. Please tell me okay. what. Let's, let's have you talk to him. Okay. okay. So before, before we get into your questions, let me go ahead and read this to you. You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand that? Yes. You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during questioning. Do you understand that? Yes. Uh, if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you free of charge before any questioning if you want. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Do you want to talk to me? I want to ask you what my charge is and what the suspicion is. Okay, so I stopped you for driving on the sidewalk, okay? Uh, then when I spoke to you, you seemed confused. You didn't seem to understand where you were at other than to be able to say ATMs, so you seemed disoriented. Um, I tried to do uh, an investigation to determine if you were under the influence of any chemicals. You refused, so I have to go by you know what I've got at that point. Uh, also, at that point, I had looked in your car, and I saw that there were several pill bottles on the floor, um, very possibly medications that could impair your driving. Uh, so, placed you under arrest for DUI. Uh, I find that the drugs in the car are um, uh, the kinds of medications that could make you impaired. Did you take any this evening? Now, the cop here has completely abandoned protocol and decency, so there is absolutely nothing to gain from conversing with him at this point. The victim should just say, I do not feel comfortable answering questions without an attorney present, and keep repeating that phrase no matter what the police officer asks. As you can see, the cops have already spun all of his natural reactions to their questioning and to the situation as proof of his intoxication, and then illegally searched his vehicle and found prescription medication in properly labeled pharmacy bottles. The cops found these medications illegally, yet they are still questioning the driver about them. That is why this is a good time to stop answering any and all questions. You already have what you need to bring your lawsuit. And at this point, anything you say can only jeopardize a favorable outcome. I haven't been taking any this week. Okay. It's an accumulative thing. It's a whole entire thing. But I guarantee you would have been a lot better if you were just cool with them out of the stop. You know what I mean? I think that's what kind of caused all this stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, right. What the cop said on camera right there is so unconstitutional that it should be enough for any competent lawyer to be able to sue the socks off of this police department. If you listened carefully, the cop just said, if you had been more cool at the stop, you wouldn't be here. But watching the video, we all can see that the driver did not do anything to be uncooperative during the stop or to resist arrest. This is why you always immediately request a breathalyzer. If you request a breathalyzer, the cops have to base their arrest on the breathalyzer results and not on unconstitutional and made-up criteria such as whether they felt you were acting cool with them during the stop. I know you do. 
But well, I never, like, I, 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 right? I didn't, I didn't break any laws. Well, no, you, you broke, you broke a couple laws. With the exception of maybe a traffic infraction. But now I'm in jail for mm -hmm. DUI. Yeah. It's weird how things go like that. It's usually how it is, man. So it's the, the little, the little thing, and then it leads to something bigger. Yeah, you know? when you're black. It has nothing to do with whether you're black or you're I white. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be like hard pressed to find another white guy who spent an evening in jail for a DUI while while being absolutely sober. You probably never have seen it. I've arrested plenty of white guys for DUI. Yeah, and they were probably under the influence, but I'm not. Just because you say you're not. I mean, everyone I arrest, I'm not drunk. I'm not this. I'm not that. It doesn't mean that you are. You know what I mean? Right. And and honestly, dude, it's kind of it's it's offensive to me that that you automatically pull that card, dude. I I, I don't I don't really appreciate that. Oh, um, oh well. And look look at our. No 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 no. I'm, I'm not gonna. Position. I'm not, dude. That's that's. I, I really don't like when people do that. It, That's because you're a white guy with the upper hand and the... I, I have no upper hand on you, dude. You absolutely do. We are no different. I'm, like, you You read white privilege every day of your life. Wow. Because you totally know me, right? No, because I know that you're white. So you can deny your inherent privilege if it, may, it like... I, I imagine it makes you feel better to do so and imagine that you're on a level playing field that you're not, but you will deny that perception plays a role. There, it, it's not that, oh my God, that's a black guy. He's probably, he's probably dealing dope. Something like that, dude. You know, a cop actually told me that. He, a cop in Santa Cruz told me that black men in, the, in this one particular area mm -hmm. are all um, pre presumed drug suspects until otherwise cleared. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you think that's racism? Absolutely. But what do you mean do I think that's racism? When when it's based on race, what do you refer to it as? Everyone does that, dude. Everyone profiles people. It's how people stay safe. I know you do it every single day. I do it every single day. I do it every single day. I do it every single day. Yeah. I'm not denying it's, that. But it's like you take people's freedom away. Yeah, I try. I try and go out there and find bad people who are trying to do bad things to people. Absolutely. Then you like make harsh presumptions against people of color. They're not harsh presumptions. No, they absolutely are. Like this is ridiculous. Like, mm -hmm. well, anyway, dude, this is what it is. I'm sorry. Try to resist the urge to make the cops understand how wrong they are. Let them feel how wrong they are when you win a huge settlement and they lose their jobs. Definitely don't debate the cops on whether their actions are racist. We all know the police are racist, and most of the time extremely dumb, like third or fourth grade reading level. We also know that they spend most of their time on the job targeting black people they think are vulnerable. However, accusing a cop of being racist on camera is something that you can't predict the ways a predominantly white jury will respond to the footage if it is introduced in court. Once detained, the best thing to do to maximize your potential legal settlement is refuse to answer questions without an attorney present and then remain silent. Turn on my gentleman back, put in cuffs again. Right there, so just open the door for you. Have a seat for me. I wanted to ask me or ask you about the uh, the sun permit. Do you live around here, or did you just, just borrow it or something? Uh, it was in your car. Uh, What's that? I said I don't want to answer any questions. Okay, um, and then just to I, I don't know why I totally forgot to to mention this. Um, the the sergeant who arrested you. You remember? You didn't want to talk to him? Um, I always forget this. He's actually Mexican. 
It was kind of interesting. I like how you think that matters. I like how you think that matters. So, let's start out by just being completely honest with each other. Okay? From the start. I'll be honest with you, you be honest with me. Fair enough? Okay. So, last thing you had to drink was about six weeks ago. I don't remember how long, like the day. Okay. Like I said, let's be honest with each other. Okay? And when was the last time you had something to drink? I, I, it's so long ago, I don't remember. And if, if you're asking, like, was it, was it within the last, I I'm like looking at the last day. Okay. I haven't drank within, w within the month of December. I have not so, had Okay, you, so you have not had anything to drink within the last day? Absolutely not. Okay, no, no alcohol? Absolutely not. Okay. Wait, what's your medication for, if you want me asking? Anxiety. For anxiety? Okay. Are you suffering from anxiety? Like, do you, were you diagnosed with? you know, anxiety uh, disorder, anxiety issues, anything like that? Yes. Okay. By like a, a registered doctor? Yes. Okay. How often are you supposed to take your anxiety medication? Um, when I feel anxiety. Okay. Now you should actually pause the video when I include excerpts from the police reports and read them carefully so that you can see how the cops will twist your words and why you should refuse to answer questions without a lawyer even when you know that you've done nothing wrong. All the victim said is that he hasn't taken any prescription meds recently. This would seem like the right answer given that the cops have been accusing him of taking medication that might impair his ability to drive. However, in his police report, the cop says that he knows the victim is lying since his training taught him that most anxiety meds have to be taken consistently and daily. This is not medical fact. However, it shows why you are better off saying nothing. You weren't feeling any anxiety the last few days, you were doing okay? So you decided not to take it? Correct. Okay. When I asked Suspect Anderson to clarify about how often he would take his medication, he became frustrated and told me, only when I have anxiety. Everybody watching this video can see with their own eyes that the victim is not acting uncooperative and is remaining calm. He is not responding to the officer in a frustrated manner. However, the cops can lie in their police reports as much as they want. Therefore, it's better not to say anything. Okay. So no medication several days, definitely not in the last 24 hours. You've had no alcohol and no medication in the last 24 hours. That's correct. That is correct. Okay, perfect. Based on suspect Anderson's statements regarding his medication, I believed he was being deceitful with me. Okay, so I, I think I've done a, a decent job at least of figuring out kind of your medication side of it, right? Sure. Do you feel okay about that? Sure. You don't seem very happy about that. No, I'm not happy at all. Okay, explain that. I'm, I'm, I can't believe that I'm in a police station for... You, you can relax your arms if you want. I mean, whatever's comfortable. I'm, I'm not trying to, you don't have to do this. You can, if this is more comfortable, whatever's more comfortable for you, dude. Go ahead. What's next? Suspect Anderson appeared confused and disoriented during the entire contact. I'm only pausing here to remind you again that the cops can say and write whatever lies they want. Again, remain silent once in custody. The victim is answering concisely and calmly, yet the cop says he believed he was being deceitful based on the way he answered his questions. Until the body camera footage is retrieved, it will always be the cop's word against yours. And until the footage is requested and obtained by your lawyer, the cops will always be at an advantage because they are allowed to lie. I, I just want to make sure that, you know, I've explained it thoroughly to you. And that's all. I'm trying to be thorough. And you, you, like your uh, camera has an audio receptor, correct? An audio receptor? Yes. Is it recording audio? You don't have to talk like jargon, dude. Just, just talk normal. I'm not talking jargon. Is, is there a receiver receiving audio? Come on, man. I'm not talking. <laughs> it's not funny. We are recording sound. We, we are recording sound, video, everything. Do you not know the word receptor? I, I do, but you're just the way you're 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 talking is. is it's a little off. You can just talk, you know, normal, right? I'm talking normal. Okay. Okay. If that's how you normally talk, I'm sorry. M most people I talk to don't talk like that. Well, they just ask, hey, is the audio being recorded? And I say, yes, not the receptor. But it, that's a different story. Okay. Any other questions about that? Let's begin. At this point in the video, I want to shift gears and focus more on the topic of field sobriety tests. But I want to pause here and not to sound repetitive, but once you are in police custody, just keep remaining silent, no matter how hard it may seem in the moment. 
the cop starts laughing at the victim because he says receptor. Many cops are insecure about their own intelligence and don't like when you use big words. I think the saying comes from the author John Steinbeck, but it goes something like, use a word a man doesn't understand and he'll hate you for it, or something like that. Again, the reason remaining silent is the best strategic move is not because you aren't smart enough to reason with the cops. Everyone knows police often read at elementary school levels, so being smarter than a cop isn't saying much. The reason you are remaining silent is because there can come a point, as you see here, where the police have stepped so far beyond the line that there is almost nothing they can do to de-escalate without suffering real blows to their pride and even professional consequences. So they will try to get a reaction from you no matter what. While you may think you are speaking to them calmly, you have to remember that they are still trying to bait you into losing your temper or incriminating yourself and therefore ruining your chances of bringing a successful lawsuit against them later. So if their goal is to get you to say something that absolves them or incriminates you, the best way to stop them from achieving that goal is to simply say nothing. Alright, very good. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Okay. Six. 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010. Suspect Anderson did not complete the exercise as explained and demonstrated. Suspect Anderson kept both of his hands behind his back during the entire exercise instead of at his sides as I had explained and demonstrated. Reading what the cop wrote in the police report is important. Cops are not trained in any field of medicine that makes them qualified to conduct these tests in the first place. But once you agree to a field sobriety test, the cop has full reign to exaggerate or spin any body language that you do exhibit. And even worse, once you agree to and begin the test, they can lie and say you did things that you did not do. As you are about to see, they can even try to guess what you were thinking when they write their police reports. So never agree to a field sobriety test. The only way to pass one is if the cop wants you to pass. It is not illegal to request a breathalyzer, even if you have to wait for it. It is illegal for the cops to refuse you a breathalyzer. Just relax. Take a breath. I'm just getting on my pen here and my, my notepad just so I can take some notes. I'm nervous about my That's okay, dude. Head. You're fine. We, we already passed searched you. All right. Probably unless you got something like concealed where we can't even find it. You want to turn and face me just so we can, you know, talk? Perfect, dude. Okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and then when you're done, turn around. Again, left foot, arms down at your side. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then when you're done, you can step off. Any questions? I explained and demonstrated the exercise for suspect Anderson. I asked him if he understood the directions and he indicated he did. Suspect Anderson did not complete the exercise as explained and demonstrated. Suspect Anderson kept his arms behind his back during the entire exercise instead of at his sides as I had explained and demonstrated. Suspect Anderson also did not walk six paces for the second round. Suspect Anderson counted six steps aloud, but then took two additional steps and did not say them aloud. I believe Suspect Anderson did this because he had realized he made a mistake. Now I want everybody to pay close attention to and remember what happens next. The police finished the field sobriety exam and then they asked the victim to sit on the ground in front of a squad car. The victim's head is down because he has essentially been kidnapped and held hostage in a police precinct basement by law enforcement over a DUI allegation despite being entirely sober. But in the police report, 
the officer says that he thinks his head is down because he knows he failed the sobriety test. Anyways, right after the field sobriety test, they take him to another room and make him draw a blood sample anyways. It was this blood sample that exonerated the victim because when the toxicology report came back, it showed that he had no alcohol or drugs in his system at all. So if you don't consent to a field sobriety test, all the cops can do is skip all of this BS and just go right to the blood sample or breathalyzer. By doing this, you don't even give them the chance to falsify the results of your field sobriety test in their police reports, and you don't give them the chance to make up these kind of lies. I repeat, never consent to a field sobriety test, and right at the outset of any DUI accusation, request a breathalyzer immediately. That's all. Just for my safety, you know what I mean? Thanks, dude. I really appreciate that. You can just relax. Perfect. When suspect Anderson finished the exercise, he had his head down, shoulders slouched forward, and did not make a sound. This demeanor was very different from the other demeanors he had after completing the two other exercises. Based on suspect Anderson's body demeanor, I believed he knew he had made a mistake and was upset about it. Thank you for tuning in to another unlawful arrest prevention video. In this particular case, the victim did bring a lawsuit and was able to reach a settlement agreement with the police. If you ever find yourself the victim of police misconduct, it is important that you hire a competent lawyer who can bring a lawsuit and follow it all the way through till its conclusion. By studying examples of how police break the law and the tactics they use to target black people, you can train yourself on how to respond strategically during the course of an unlawful arrest in order to strengthen your lawsuit and maximize your potential financial settlement. You can always reach out to us at UAP at unlawfularrestprevention.org if you have an attorney to refer to our national attorney database, or if you need help finding representation in your state, or or even if you would just like to submit a video for us to analyze. Half of my life, I've been living in the trenches, not sure of living to the next day. I didn't fight to be the president of my country. Yet it came by accident, I think. So I was Damn. fighting for my own rights. Dollar pulled up on me, heated, like one of Dini. Where your vest at? You was 4K, you was Crown Prince of the Expats. Plus, Damn. we in Kigali, we can't roll around like that. Remember when we first met? You the one who told me that.